That's what I'm talking about. Sure. We want a rematch. I can't lose to a batty boy. Cool it, Danny. That's enough. It's okay, Isaac. I got this. For the last time, Danny, I'm straight. I'm not gay. Aight, easy star, easy. It's a joke, man. Thanks for having my back, Isaac. I wish more people could be like you. It's not easy being raised by two dads. Sometimes, I think it would have been better staying in foster care. Really? Do you mean that? Don't get me wrong. I'm grateful to have parents that care about me. And it's pretty cool having a dad who's a big shot attorney with a lot of connections. But still, it's not easy. Getting constantly picked on. And, well, the pressure isn't easy. I, I know I can confide this in you. But sometimes, I feel like my fathers expect me to be like them. You mean... Well, they don't come out and say it, but I can sense it. Well, Nelson, you know how the Most High feels about that. When we look in the scriptures, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 22, he says that man shall not lie with another man as they do with women, because it's an abomination in the eyes of the Most High Yahuwah. And even in the Renewed Covenant writings, that's the New Testament, we see that Yahuwah is still against homosexuality. In Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 28, it says, Elohim gave them over to degrading passions, for even their women exchanged natural relations for what is against nature. And likewise, the men also, having left natural relations with the women, burned in their lust for one another with men, committed indecency, and receiving back the reward which was due to their strength. And even as they did not think it worthwhile to possess the knowledge of Elohim, uh, Elohim gave them over to a reprobate mind to do what is improper. Yeah, Isaac, trust me, I know all those scriptures. Before I was adopted, I was living in a home with a Christian foster mother, Jamaican lady, Miss Pauline was her name. And yeah, she knew her Bible. Well, Nelson, I guess what I'm trying to say is, even though the scriptures tell us we must honor our father and mother, that doesn't mean we need to follow the mistakes or wrongs that we make. And I'm not telling you to follow your heart either, because the heart is deceitfully wicked. You need to follow his word. Yeah, I hear you, man. Hey, Dad. Well, I gotta go. See you tomorrow, man. Hi, Mr. Lawrence. Hey there, Isaac. Did you guys win today? Yes, sir. Come on, Melvin. You've had way too much to drink. Let's call it a night. Why must you guys be such party poopers? I want to celebrate, okay? Tonight is a special night, and I'm going to show my pride. So just leave me be, okay? Come on, Chris. You know how stubborn he is. Let's just go. Hey, you guys, check this out. This is going to be way too easy. Little bro, it's time for you to prove your worth. Hey, yo, little Barachi, that's a pretty shirt you got there. Oh, yeah? What's it to you, macho man? You better be careful. I got more rights today. Yeah, you got rights, all right. The right to remain permanently silent. You, you touch me, cup guy? And that's a hate crime. So I want to see you try. Who said anything about me having to touch you, princess? It's him you have to worry about. <laughs> You've got to be kidding, right? Oh! You ain't fooling me, Ishtar. That's better. Poor man's Dr. Evil and Mini Me? Hmm. Three against one. Last time I checked, didn't seem too fair to me, guys. Wait a second. Am I on camera or something? No strings? That's impossible. Impossible to you, maybe. Hey, Mini Me, what's up with the dog collar? 
I think I will call you Fido. Come on, boy. Come on. Do a trick. Come on. Roll over. You want to see a trick? I'll show you a trick. Whoa. Forget me. This gets straight out of the Exorcist. Oh. And then there were two. That's a shimmy in Hebrew. Don't worry about it. I got this, bro. Ow! And now there is one. That's a hat in Hebrew. I hope you're taking notes, little boys and girls. All right, all right. I'll make this easy for you. Not so, Mr. Clean. No more flying. Hey, yo, I've had enough of your circus act, kid. I'm gonna crush you with my bare hands. Oh, man. Hey, you, down there. Tell Donnie and Raph I said hello. <laughs> hey, mister. I'm sorry those thugs did that to you. I already called the cops. They should be on their way. Oh, I hear them now. Take care. Thank you, Chen, for your presentation on the Shang Dynasty. Isaac, I believe it's your turn. Shalom Aleichem. That means, peace, y'all. <laughs> okay, class, settle down, settle down. My ancient civilization is about two twin cities named Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> I already learned this in Sunday school. He's gonna talk about homo. That's enough from you, Mr. Butterfield. In the book of Bereshit, that's Genesis chapter 19, we read about my ancient forefather. His name was Lot. Lot lived in the land of Sodom. Sodom was a beautiful and lush land, which is why Lot chose to live there. However, even though the land was beautiful, the people there were immoral and wicked. The Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, had enough of their wickedness and was going to execute his judgment. The Heavenly Father extended his mercy to Lot and his family by sending two heavenly messengers to warn Lot and his family to get out of Sodom. Now, Lot invited these heavenly messengers to stay with him in his home because he knew how wicked the men of the city of Sodom were. But word got out that Lot was entertaining strangers. And wouldn't you know, a gang of Sodomites, both young and old, surrounded Lot's home and were beating down the doors, trying to get to the men inside. Lot came outside and tried to make peace with them, but it did no good. The heavenly messengers pulled Lot back into the home and warned him to gather his family and his beloved. The heavenly messengers declared, we are going to destroy this place because the cry against them has grown great before the face of Yahuwah and Yahuwah has sent us to destroy it. Now Lot tried to warn some of his family members, but they just wouldn't listen. They wouldn't take him seriously. So finally the heavenly messengers literally had to drag Lot and his family out. The messengers warned, run for your life and don't look back. great power and omnipresence of Yahuwah is shown in Genesis chapter 19 verse 24 where it says Yahuwah rained sulfur and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from Yahuwah out of the heavens. The whole twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed and sadly Lot's wife looked back. So though she physically left Sodom, her heart was still there and as a result of her disobedience she became a pillar of salt. Sadly, America is quickly becoming like Sodom and Gomorrah. And if the nation doesn't repent to Yahuwah, it will suffer a similar fate. All right, Isaac, that's enough. I've already warned you about using these class presentations to do your personal sermons. I'm going to be deducting 10 points from your presentation for that, mister. All right, class, remember, there's going to be a quiz tomorrow on pages 55 through 75 of your textbook. 
Study, study, study. Welcome to Tea Time with O. I'm your host, Oprah Winfrey. Today's show is about everyday heroes, and I have with me Mr. Melvin Poindexter, who survived a vicious attack just two weeks ago following the decision to allow same-sex marriage nationwide. Melvin is in search of his hero, who saved him from a vicious gang. Melvin, tell us about it. Well, Oprah girl. That's Miss Winfrey to you. Ooh, touch it. Well, Miss Winfrey, I was born this way, so I just can't help I am. I was leaving church Sunday evening, minding my own business, enjoying God's nature, when a gang of super thugs came out of nowhere and attacked me. Now, normally I can take care of myself, I, I know a little karate, but one of those punks, they took a rock and threw it at me and hit me right in the head, so I was already at a disadvantage. Amazing. What happened next? Well, girlfriend, I am one of the richest women in the world. I'm not your girlfriend. Oh, sorry. Well, that's when my chocolate boy wonder came and saved the day. Was he tall and muscular like Moore's chestnut? Uh, no, uh, he was about yay high, and that's with the afro. Uh, I told you, he was, uh, a boy wonder. He was just a kid. Oh, yeah, and he had a yellow cape. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You got saved by a little kid with an afro who had a yellow cape. Yes, Miss Winfrey. Cross my heart and hope to die. Okay, well, there you have it, folks. Our mystery man, uh, or should I say mystery kid, if you have any idea who this might be, please call our hotline. Dad, Dad, I know who that is. Really? Who? It's Isaac. He fits that description perfectly. Wow. This could be just what our movement needs. I'm going to call my contact in Washington. Write down that hotline number. Hello? Yes, this is his mom. Really? Well, he never mentioned anything to me. Yes, I think that would be great. Thank you. Mentally enslaving all my people like Isaac. 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 Young Ben, did you forget to tell me something that happened a few weeks ago? Um. Isaac, how many times have I told you? That when you use your powers to help someone, I should be the first to know. That was the White House that just called. Oh no, Mom. Did I get us in trouble? No, baby. It's just the opposite. They want to give you a reward next week on national TV. Now, I agree that you can go, but there's to be no talk about your special powers. Okay, Mom. And Mom... I'm really sorry. I know you worry about me. It's okay, baby. Greetings, this is GNN White House correspondent Cindy Wong. We are here at the White House awaiting President Barack Obama's special award ceremony dedicated to a special young hero named Isaac Carter. I'm here with a gentleman who says he knows Isaac very well, Pastor Seymour Bucks. Pastor Bucks, tell us about your relationship with Isaac. Well, Cindy, I've known Isaac for quite some time. 
Uh, not too long ago, I had a good counseling session with the young man in my office. Uh, there we discussed certain biblical principles. So, uh, I'd like to think that that influenced him somewhat in being a good Samaritan and helping that man in need. Thank you, Pastor. So what are your thoughts about the new law permitting gay marriage? Huh? Oh, 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 oh well, uh, I, I believe God's love is able to cover a multitude of sin. So then, Pastor, you believe homosexuality is a sin? Oh, wait, hold on now, Cindy. I, I, I believe as long as you go to church and you, you pay your tithes, well, God's got a place for you in his kingdom. So then, you don't believe it's abomination? No, no, I do believe this is Obama's nation. I, I done voted for the man. Oh, I, I just got word that the president is ready. Now hold on there, Cindy. He's going to have to wait. You good folks, yeah, you come down and see Pastor Buxer here at 1666 Lucinda Lane in Brooklyn, New York, where we accept everybody. And don't forget to bring your tides. We come together to recognize the great courage of somebody who made a decision to care. A bunch of felons who are anti-American who try on violence made an attack on a citizen. One child decided to care, providing help to this citizen in the face of danger. That was not easy. A lot of people, frankly, run from trouble. Today, we recognize the courage of this child. Check it out, Juan. The crowd is just eating this up. This is just what our movement needs, and we can use the racial angle to show that our struggle is just like the civil rights struggle. And who better as our mascot than a cute little black kid? Da, da, you kind of remind me of that little black kid on different strokes. What was his name? Webster? No, Juan. That was Arnold you're thinking of. Just a few weeks ago, the Supreme Court ruled to allow same-sex couples the right to marriage. And just shortly after that, Mr. Melvin Poindexter was viciously attacked by a group of thugs. Just a few weeks ago, we had Mr. Poindexter on my show when he was looking for his hero. Well, we found him, and he does have a yellow cape. I still gotta ask him what the deal is with that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our hero, Little. Isaac Carter. Now, Isaac told me today that he was just being a good Samaritan and following the principles of the good book. I think if more of us did that here in America, America would be a better place. Isaac, we're giving you this special medal because of your courage and this certificate signed by me and the president. And finally, we know you are a big basketball fan. So, you've been awarded with season tickets to the New York Knicks game. And you will be sitting courtside, rubbing elbows with Spike. Someone get him a stool. Greetings, America. When I helped Mr. Poindexter, I didn't see him as a gay man being attacked. I saw him as a fellow human being in need. And if I had to do it all over again, I would. Aww. I really appreciate all the accolades and awards. The spirit of Yah is compelling me to say something. Mr. Poindexter didn't deserve to be attacked. No one deserves that. But it doesn't change what I believe about his lifestyle. Or about this same-sex marriage ruling that the court just passed. 
in the eyes of Almighty Yahuwah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Homosexuality is an abomination. <gasps> There's all this talk about gay pride and American pride. Well, the same good book you were just talking about, Miss Winfrey, in it, it says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. No, 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 no. Hold on, Mr. President, this is important. By allowing that law to pass, you put this country at odds with the creator of the heavens and the earth. His Torah clearly tells us homosexuality is an abomination. The law of Yahuwah is perfect, converting the soul. The witness of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the simple. Enough is enough. There needs to be some national repentance, or else Yahuwah is going to render a harsh judgment on this land. I mean, this country claims to be built on Christian values, but I don't see any of those values. That rainbow sign that the gay rights movement uses, that was hijacked because that was Father Yahuwah's sign, sign of the covenant, that he would not flood this earth with waters again. But it's a grave reminder that the next time he's gonna render his judgment with fire. Oh, shut him up! How are you gonna impose your outdated beliefs on me? I'm free to choose how I want to live my life. Oh, but I thought you were born that way and it wasn't a choice. At least I still got these mixed ticks. I'll be needing those. You all should be ashamed of yourselves. He's just a child. Let's go, baby. Well, Isaac, you managed to impress a whole nation and then upset the whole nation all in the same day. Well, I guess I'm in good company. What do you mean? Well, Yahushua the Messiah was loved by the people at first. And then, towards the end of his life, the same crowds that loved him were suddenly saying, crucify him. Yes, that is true. As the days go on, doing the right thing will go more and more unpopular. But, you are still a hero in the eyes of two people. Yeah? Who's that? Him and me. And I got you a little something something to remind you of that. Make that three people. Hey, Nelson! Isaac, what you did yesterday took a lot of guts. I thought you were fierce on the court, but you took it to a whole nother level. And you can stand up to a whole nation to declare what's right, well, it means I can stand up to my dads and live according to the book, even if they don't agree with it. The word says in these last days, a man's enemies will be of his own house, but I'll be praying for you, Nelson. Thanks, Isaac. I'll catch you later. So, Isaac, we still have this free trip in Washington. What do you want to do now? Feel like visiting the Washington Monument? Seriously, Mom? I just got done dealing with one abomination, and you want to take me to another? I'm just messing with you. The law of Yahuwah is perfect, converting the soul. The witness of Yahuwah is sure, making wise and simple. The statutes of Yahuwah are right, rejoicing the heart, rejoicing the heart. Commandment of Yahuwah is pure, enlightening the eyes, enlightening the eyes. Singing praises, we sing praise, singing praise, singing praises, singing praises, let's sing praise.